This video is brought to you by Viking Jewelry. Hey Bjorn, how'd you like that? Nice, isn't it? Hello noble ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking and today we have a bit of a what if scenario, a sort of hypothetical discussion. We are clearly talking about the Vikings, although from now on I will refer to them as the Norse, Norse warriors and raiders. And we're going to discuss the idea of what if they had access to full plate armor? Would they have given a pass or would they have used it? Now, clearly, this is an hypothetical scenario because generally speaking, when we talk about the Viking Age, we're talking about the 8th century, all the way up to 1066. And at that time, plate armor in the sense of this kind of full plate suit, that is a late 15th century kind of armor, was not present, it wasn't available. But the question is, if they did have access to it, would they have worn it? Now, hypothetical discussions tend to be very theoretical, but today we're going practical. So I've got quite a lot of weapons here. I've got maces that we can try and swing around. I've got swords. As you can see, this is a late 13th century one-handed sword. I don't have Viking per se, Viking swords or Norse swords, but this will still give us an idea because it's one-handed, just like all uh, Norse swords. We've got more maces. This is a 12th century bronze-headed mace. Here we've got a brass mace, again, generally speaking 12th to 13th century, sometimes even 14th. I've got lots of weapons. I've got a spear, this one, which is more of a Japanese type of spear. But I think these are important and they can all be used to discuss this, because when we are talking about would they have worn it or would they have passed it, when talking about plate armor, we are really speaking about pros and cons. We are speaking about mobility. Now, usually when we think of the Norse going on Vikings, we imagine these people, they sail on their long ships, they find this monastery, for instance, they raid it, they take the loot, they take the booty, they kill everyone, and then they're back on their ships and off they go. Now, for situations like this, probably you don't really need much armor, you've got your weapons, you attack by surprise, you're fast, you're quick, you're brutal, and the majority of the people that you are fighting are not trained most of them are not even armed. So you're not going to need much armor in those scenarios, although perhaps there might be some exceptions. But when we are talking about the Norse, we are also talking about warfare. Imagine the great heathen army of 878 and all the different battles that they had with the Anglo-Saxons. Now, in those scenarios, would they, given the chance, have accepted and started using full plate armor? Well, you know that on this channel, I'm all about practice. So I happen, as you know, to have both male armor, which I'm going to wear in a minute, and then a, a well full plate suit of armor of late 15th century. I don't have the legs yet, but for the purposes of this video, because we are going to swing around weapons, I've got all the upper part of my armor available and I'm going to use it. But generally speaking, plate has a lot of mobility. And I'm going to make a dedicated video to describe all the pros and cons and all the reasons and the history behind this specific arm harness. But today I'm going to put on the breastplate, the backplate, the arms, the shoulders, and I'm going to swing around all the different kinds of weapons that may be swords, maces, although maces weren't particularly common with the Norse, not really associated much. They were used in Scandinavia, more of a later period. Uh, but I'm going to use spears as well, and then I'm going to do all of that wearing mail, so we can compare the difference in mobility. Okay, so now I'm going to put on both my mail shirt and use some weapons and then my plate armor and use some weapons. I'm going to wear my plate directly on my arming doublet rather than wearing mail underneath because we want to first see how much plate actually impedes movement on its own. I'm going to look at every single weapon and every single movement. I'm going to give you my opinions as the person who is actually using the weapons and wearing the armor. See you in a little bit. Before continuing our discussion, I would like to mention the sponsor that made this video possible, namely Viking Jewelry. And you know that I've been working with Viking Jewelry for a few years, and in one of the very first sponsorships to this channel, they sent me this bronze ring, and I liked it so much that I actually used my own money and of course my own coupon code to buy the exact same ring in silver, and I made posts on my Instagram, and those of you who follow me already know this, I made posts on my Facebook page to show them off. I buffed them a little because I love polished bronze and polished silver and I asked all my friends so which one do you like the most do you like the bronze one do you like the silver one I really like their stuff and if you like their stuff too well today of all days 
is the day because if you use the coupon code META50 you will get a 50% discount let me say that again a 50% discount onto the pendant Big Vizier Runic so if you liked this pendant and you thought you know it's a good pendant I like it but I'm on a budget maybe you wanted to buy it to your friend maybe you wanted to buy it for your father for the next 48 hours 50% off and you will find the link in the description below or if you're into bracelets if you're into rings well remember that there is also the possibility of using my second coupon code META15 that you can use to get a 15% off the entire store so definitely today's the day check out the links in the description below and happy shopping A lot of people, particularly those who have no experience, actual practical experience with full plate armor, will immediately think, well, the, the Norse liked being mobile in combat because of their very dynamic fighting style with sword and shield, axe and shield, spear and shield, and so no, heavy plate armor is not going to work. But is it heavy? I mean, this is a very accurate replica of the uh, breastplate and backplate of the Mantova B1 kind of armor uh, and it's a late 15th century Italian kind of cuirass and notice how I can just hold it with one hand and weight 
isn't really much of a factor in this case. So the general idea that plate is heavy and male instead is medium doesn't really make that much sense. Now, given that there are a lot of different components to armor, the more you armor up, the more stuff you'll have on you. So eventually it will increase the amount of weight that you are carrying. Doing this test, I noticed that mobility isn't really much of a factor, or at least not as much as we would think. Now, given the more armor you wear, the, the more fatigued you will be. But you have to imagine that even though some people might say, well, yes, but full plate armor was mostly for knights, so for people who are mounted, so generally speaking, sitting on a horse, and, uh, and of course, instead, the Norse were generally speaking, fine in a shield wall so they are standing and it's a different situation they're going to tire more easily and even though there might be a little bit of truth into that I'd like you to remember two things thing number one medieval knights if you look at actual medieval saddles they're not exactly sitting you don't sit fully on a horse when you're wearing a full plate armor and you're using a medieval saddle, um, just like you would, for example, as you're riding a motorcycle, you're actually almost standing. Of course, your legs are not entirely straight, but they are a lot more straight as, the, as you put the foot inside the stirrup. And you use the horse almost as a standing fighting platform. Now, of course, your weight is still on the horse. So don't get me wrong, you're not standing on the horse, but you are almost standing on the stirrups. So definitely not 100% sitting as you would on a modern saddle. Secondly, look at the English knights. In the traditional way of fighting of the medieval combat system of English warriors, the majority of knights used horses as transportation, but then they would dismount and fight on foot. And if you look at the battle, many different battles that you have during the War of the Roses, you'll see that happening all the time. So you can wear full plate and fight on foot if needed. So with that being said, my opinion as someone who wore these things is that yes, given the occasion, I think the Norse who were going on a battle would have definitely worn at least some full plate armor. Maybe not all Norse would have liked the full plate arms, for instance, although today we've just noticed how much how flexible they really are. But you know, maybe you, you, maybe you don't really need the left one if you're holding a big shield, so perhaps some, some compromise into it. You don't really need to, to wear the whole thing if you still want to maintain the way you normally traditionally fight. Perhaps some people would have abandoned the round shield and would have got something smaller considering the extra protection and the arms can give you, but perhaps other, other didn't because they liked the, maybe they wouldn't have abandoned the, the shield wall. But definitely some components of full plate armor, the rich uh, Norsemen would have definitely loved to bits, even though it might go against the sort of stereotyped idea of the Norse warrior. Still imagine one thing, every single Norse warrior that could afford it bought mail they bought helmets and they did protect themselves. And this is why I'm now using the really reason and logic to try and imagine what they would have done if they were given a breastplate backplate like the ones I have. In my opinion, they would have immediately worn them, even if they chose to perhaps wear a little less degree of armor than a full armored knight. And again, perhaps some would have completely changed the way of fighting. So my final opinion is, given the chance, the majority of Norse warriors would have definitely worn at least some degree of plate armor, if not full plate, depending on the situation. But let me know what you think in the comments below. And of course, remember the sponsor of this video, Viking Jewelry. You will find links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm really looking forward to reading your opinions in the comments below, as I always learn a lot from your comments and your ideas. Thank you so much for watching and remember the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye. <laughs>